So there is the login screen. I can log in now. And as you can see, it's Debian 10. It's got the Debian 10 logo and colors. And that's the new installation. So what I've got to do now is to add in other the other images. So let me get a console up again and become root. Okay, got to do that manually. So I'll become root manually. So the first thing I need to do is to edit the um, FS tab to include this um, partition with the DVD images on it. So I'll copy the UUID and edit it. And add it in here. And that gets mounted at far DVDs. It's an X4. And I'll just copy these parameters here. Again, I'm not sure, but I'll just set that to three. Save that. Oops. Save that. And now I need to make the directory for that partition to be attached to. Should we do mount all? And there you can see it's been attached and it will get attached and mounted each time the machine is booted. Now, one thing we've got to do is to extract the data that's on each of these DVDs um, because I don't believe it's possible, or maybe wrong, um, I don't believe it's possible to get Debian to use the raw ISO images. So what we're going to do is to extract the files that are needed out of each ISO image and store that in VAR DVDs instead. So we'll start with 10.1.0 um, Yeah. And you can see we've got that Jigdo DVD directory there. What we've got to do is to, as I say, go through each ISO, extract some files, and then place them into this directory. So I'm going to use rsync to copy the files in case there's any interruptions. Should be able to resume it, but unfortunately rsync is not installed as part of the default um, Debian installation. So what we need to do is to mount the first DVD and install it because we're not connected to a network. It has to come off this DVD. So to do that, we'll do use low setup, loopback setup, minus FP. F is to I think search all of the image and P is to get the partitions and we want to use the first DVD image which is that one there. Now although it's not done anything what it has done if we do low setup on its own you can see what it's done it's created or attached this ISO to the first loopback device and usually there's eight of these available but we'll only be dealing with one at a time so we'll always be dealing with loop zero. 
what we've got to do now is to mount that device because effectively we've plugged a, a CD or a DVD into a drive. We need, now need to mount that um, image and we do mount slash dev slash loop zero because that's the device that the kernel knows it as and we'll mount it at media CD-ROM. Now we need to copy, we can't use our sync as I would like, we need to copy these files that are on this disk and I'll show you that. Uh, which are the files in the pool directory and the files in the this directory, I believe. That one there. Yeah, the disks and the pool directory. We copy those to the disk and those have the individual files that we need. So we'll do... Um, Let's make a directory here first of all. Um, let's see how to do this. Yeah, I think what I'll do is go back to the DVDs and we'll make a directory called 10.1.0-1. So it shows it's the first disk of the 10.1.0 series or version change into that and we'll do a cp minus axv so i think that's all files i can't remember the x it might be for extended attributes and v for verbose and we want to copy the files uh sorry not that in uh, media CD-ROM and we want to copy from disks and pool into the current directory. So that's copying those files into that subdirectory. That's done. Now we need to unmount that disk. and delete the loop back, which we can do with low setup, minus D for delete, and the loop back device that we're interested in, which is zero we were using. So now we need to tell the system about this new directory with these files in, which it can use. And just to make or emphasize the point, the rsync is not currently available, and it should be available, I believe, on this first disk. So once we've attached it, We've told the system about these files. We should be able to install rsync. So if I try and install it now, we're not connected to a network. It can't do it. It's well, in fact, it's asking us to add a CD. So that's what we need to do is to tell it um, where the CD is. Now, yes, we could have done this while that was mounted, but we're not going to be using the system like this. We're going to have these files um, available at any time so we can just do a, a, an install as if we were connected to the network. So what I need to do is I'll use nano to edit etc apt sources dot list and this file lists all the sources of the packages that are available. So you can see currently it's got this one here which is the one it was trying to use. This would be the one it it knew about when we we're installing the system and then the security ones well the security ones we can't get them regularly because we're not connected to an internet they'll only come through every new update and this one here we can't use because we're not going to access um, it in the same way in fact we can actually modify this um, because this is files we've ex extracted we need to add in an extra um, 
parameter here where we type in trusted equals yes to say that we trust these files. And it's not a CD-ROM image, it's a file. This is just the name. We don't need to know that because we know it's going to be uh, Debian 10. We just need to enter the location of the file. So it's forward slash var, forward slash DVDs, forward slash 10.1. 1.0-1 and we must leave the forward slash after that leave the buster contrib and main in and alt uh, sorry control x save it yes and that's those changes saved now we can do apt update which should be successful it should be able to read that new dvd and you can see it has scanned it there's the directory with those files in and we should now, well, in fact, if we do an apt upgrade, there shouldn't be anything to upgrade because it's effectively the same image that we installed from. And you can see there's nothing there. But we should be able to install rsync now. And this proves what we've done is working. And there's rsync being installed and it's done. And I can now type rsync and you can see it's working. So that proves that first DVD has been integrated into the system and that we can install software from it. Now obviously this partition is quite limited in space. There's only 3.4 gig left. So what I'm going to do now, I've extracted it. I'm going to go into the jigdo directory. Uh, I need to go into 10.1.0 and then jigdo. And I'm going to delete that file the DVD one to make room for the other ones. So I'll delete that and you can see that the DVDs directory has gone up to seven gig now. So what we need to do rather than go through um, by hand uh, extracting all these <clears throat> DVDs, we can do this in a loop and automate the extraction and the deletion of these files. So I'm going to go back to the DVDs directory. You can see that this is the source directory with all the ISOs in and this is the directory with disk one in and we're going to create more directories with the subsequent disks in. So what we need to do is do a for and a variable name so disk in and then the numbers of the disk so we want to start at 2 because we've done 1 and finish on 16. Then a do to signal the start of the loop. And we do low setup is the first thing we want to do. Minus FP. The location of the, uh, sorry not mount, for DVDs, the location of DVDs, uh, 10.1.0 zero chick do dvd there's all the images we want debian 10.1.0 md dvd and then we need the disk number so this is where we put our substitution in of the variable so the variable name is disk close the curly bracket dot iso because that's going to be the name of the file so you can see this name of this file the number of the disk will be substituted as the loop goes around from 2 to 16. That would have mounted at dev loop 0, so now we need to use that mount to mount the loop loopback device at media CD ROM. So mount slash dev slash loop 0 at media slash CD ROM. Then we need to make a directory at var dvds forward slash 10.1.0 dash and then again it will be the disk number so we put dollar open curly bracket disk 
close curly bracket. So that makes a directory for it. Now we use our sync minus AV and we'll use info equals progress so we can see how it's going. And we'll install from media CD-ROM open curly bracket dists directory and the pool directory and we want to place that in var dvds 10.1.0 dash and again we need to substitute the disk variable in curly brackets Once that's copied, we need to unmount the media CD-ROM directory. Delete, or sorry, um, remove the loopback device. So low setup minus D forward slash dev forward slash loop zero. And then finally, we need to remove the ISO file that we've extracted from, which is going to be the same as this. That's better. That's working. So while that's copying, I'll go into another tab and just check to see that those are copying as I expect. So it's obviously created all the directories because it's gone through and failed. So I really need to check this directory here. And that looks good. Yep, that's okay. And that's okay, so that's fine, that's that's working great. So I'll just wait now for this to complete and then we can carry on. In fact, while that's doing that, I can show you the um, next bit that needs to be done, which is again to uh, modify the uh, let's use by uh, sources file in apt because we'll need to add one line for each of the DVDs two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen. 16 so one line for each disk and all I've got to do here is to oops, Change these yeah, perhaps it would have been easier to use No, no, it's uh, a bit limited the default via setup on Debian So two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Save that, and when that's finished, um, we'll carry on. Right, well, that's finished extracting, so I've done the sources.list file, so in theory. All we need to do is apt update, which should scan all those images, all the files, and that should be it really. It's um, apt upgrade shouldn't do anything, but it does mean, for example, I can install Blender and, for example, GIMP, a couple of packages. Okay, GIMP is already installed. So I won't bother with that one. I'll just install Blender. Okay. 
So it says these additional packages will be installed and suggested some others. And yeah, so 75 megabytes is going to be fetched from the archives, which we've just created, and it's going to take up 336 megabytes when it's installed. So you can see it's getting files from various disks. It's got some from disk one. Uh, let's go back there. Yeah, disk one and two by the looks of it. So it proves that the at least the first two images are working correctly. And that's installed. So let's see if we can run Blender to make sure that's worked. It's certainly there and yes it's loaded so that shows that the DVDs are working correctly so now I need to do the same thing but for the non-free uh, disk update in case there's any firmware that we ever need for 10.1.0 so there's only one disk I'll keep this structure so be one to one 10.1 and it's non-free let's see what this one's called firmware this dvd1.iso So I'll call this directory non-free. I'll still give it a disk number in case that does get bigger and it needs another disk in the future. That's possible. Again, we copy disks and pull. And it's copied into the same location, non-free. And then we remove on free firmware dollar disk dot ISO and done. That should do it. So again, while that's extracting, I just need to modify the sources directory again. So this is simply a copy of the line above. So deb trusted equals yes file var DVDs 10.1.0 plus non free dash one buster um, Uh, let me see, I think it's just non-free here. Let me just check my notes, I can't remember exactly what goes in here. Just did. Right, so it looks like it's just main, so it's no contrib, it's just main uh, followed by non-free to indicate that it's uh, non-free. 
Oh, sorry, yes, Contrib does work, big pardon. But it needs a non tree to indicate that it is a non tree, non free package disk. So save that and we go back again. That's all copied correctly. Let's look to see what it's done. There's the original DVD directory. So that shouldn't have that ISO in there now. That should have been deleted. So yes, it has. And the one with the dash one indicating disk one has got the disks and pool in. So that's fine. And in fact, we can tidy this up here. Now, now we've got these disks uh, installed correctly. I can get rid of that directory because there's nothing in it to speak of, unless you want to keep the jigdo files, of course. You can see it's only 98, 98 meg, so I'll get rid of that just to tidy up. And I'll do an apt update to check that the non-free works. There it is there. Uh, right, looks like there is a problem if I misspelled something. Ten one non three dash one. That looks like it's right. I'm not sure. Why that hasn't worked. Let's have a look. That looks like it's complaining about certain files. I'm not sure why. Let's just see if what I've copied in is correct. Yeah, that looks all right. I'm not sure why those few files aren't working. But apt upgrade should work and report back that nothing needs upgrading. And we could probably try to install something else. I'm not sure what would be on that, uh, to be quite honest, but um, it should be uh, working. Apart from those odd files, I'm not sure why that has happened. It's only certain files in certain directories. So whether there is an overlap with what's already installed, I'm not sure. But I'll get rid of the non-free because it's not needed anymore. The base one, we've got the files. So that is the system up to date as far as 10.1.0 is concerned.